Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to do another let's take a ride. I have some errands that I need to do today. So, uh, yeah, ride with me. And, um, yeah, not too much going on. It's cooling off here in the desert. y'all i want you to go on over to my website jewels by levon this is a great place to shop you can stock up on holiday birthday anniversary specialty gift items as well as doing a bit of a shopping spree for yourself if you're anything like me you love to shop and purchase items that are just special for you and the ones you love and my store is where you'll find them i'm really excited to invite you to jewels by levon make sure you come on over tell others about us and get those orders in for the holidays <laughs> thanks everyone and god bless happy shopping um, now we're getting that fall weather coming in and i love the change of the seasons and what most people say about living in California is that we don't really have a change of the seasons because it's around 70 something, 75 degrees all year round. And that is true. The sun is always out. It's always a beautiful day. Where in the middle of winter, where other places would be, um, you know, in the middle of winter, where other places there would be snow and sleet and you know just cold cold weather we here in Southern California are enjoying the 75 degrees and what a lot of people don't like about uh, California is just that oh this uh, seatbelt is getting on my nerves <laughs> oh well and so what a lot of people don't like about California is the fact that we don't have a change in weather. It's like always 75 degrees. And so I had a dear friend who lives in the New York state and she used to talk about the fact that she missed being in New York because she was able to experience the fall and the winter and then the change from the winter to the spring and then the summer, things of that nature. Whereas, since it's always 75 degrees out here all year round, the sun is out, uh, you can't really sense it. Now, those of us who are born and raised in California, we can sense it. We know when the winter and the fall and all the different things, we know when it's uh, changing because uh, just knowing that when it gets a little bit cooler and cooler to us, it's like 68 degrees, uh, versus 40 and 30 other places, you know? All right, guys. So I just dropped off that package at the UPS and, um, headed on to the, uh, post office. You know, that mask is something else. I gotta go, partner. That mask is something else, guys. Uh, it is something else. Let me uh, do this. Okay, so 
so I'm getting ready to get the car washed. They didn't say it was gonna rain. It's very windy out there, guys. I can't see. Let me put on my glasses so I can see what's going on here. Uh, okay. 81350. I don't know if, um, if this has never did this before. If another car is in a car wash, usually you can just put your code in. Um, but it's saying, please wait for car wash. So I don't know if it's being uh, maintained. And I have somebody behind me, so I don't want to move my spot, and then they come up here. So, okay, guys. So I'm in the car wash, the self, you know, the self car wash thing. And um, yeah, I'm saying what I want to say to us as Christians. Let's get the intents of our hearts in the right place. Me included. Me included. That's what I have to work on daily. Because when the Lord says in the, in the scriptures that there are going to be some that says, Lord, Lord, didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't I do this in your name? And he's going to say, depart from me, for I never knew you. That is what really put things in perspective to me. It let me realize that there are going to be a lot of people calling on the Most High God, thinking that they are saved, living comfortably. There are a lot of people living very comfortable, thinking that because they have a nice home, they have a nice car, they can buy clothes, whatever they want, they can, they're prospering more than they ever have in their lives, that God has indeed ordained this prosperity on their lives and because of that I am in good standing with the most high God and a lot of people's hearts are just not right the intents of their hearts are off maybe they don't smoke maybe they don't drink maybe they don't do a lot of things that we would consider these are sins, but there are sins of the heart that we have to put in check. And if we don't, we're going to be judged for it. What I am challenging us to do as Christians is to uh, let's focus in on our own hearts and get ourselves right before the Lord. Let's do what the Lord is telling us to do. Let's live the life that the Lord is telling us to live. Not in our own delusion. Not in our own delusion, but in true walking in the manifest destiny of the Most High God. Can we do that? Oh, man. You know, in and out Burger always has to have a line and you know what? I'm going to get in that line today. You know why? Because I want to talk to you guys. And I'm going to get in this line and talk to you. It has to be at least 20 cars in the drive through So what I'm challenging us to do, a lot of times when I'm getting on this platform and I'm just sharing some thoughts that are on my heart you know sometimes it's being led by the Holy Spirit and then I don't know sometimes it's just me and my opinions you know and uh, when I'm being led by the Holy Spirit I, I can feel that today I'm just talking and I think a lot of times when I'm talking, I'm not just talking to you guys, trying to preach to you guys as if I'm, I've am i made it, I'm here, I'm there. I mean, that's never going to be. Uh, we all fall short of the glory of God. Uh, we are never going to be perfect. But what we do need to do is challenge ourselves when it comes to the intent of the heart, because that is what the Lord is really going to be looking at in the last day. And we're living in the last days, believe it or not. Things are not going to go back to the way they used to be. I don't care how hard we pray. 
because the Lord did promise that there was going to be an end time, perilous times. Many of us as Christians are not prepared to go through the tribulation because we've been lied to, <laughs> hoodwinked, bamboozled. These big Christian networks that went around the world to save everyone also inundated folk with their philosophies that were not always so biblical. It sounded biblical, and uh, that's what the spirit of the Antichrist does. It, it, it gives you a little taste of the scripture and then mixes in with, and then mix, mixes in, you know, really pertinent details that will keep people away from what Christ's true message is. It's an anti-Christ message. And it's not going to come out saying, hey, this is against Christ. No, it's going to be tainted with a little bit of truth and it's going to sound good. And I think back in the day, in the 90s and stuff, when all that prosperity message came into play and we were watching these big pastors become very prosperous, of course they were going to be prosperous. Tithe and authoring were coming up to them to the top. Why not? And so if we were in their shoes, standing in a pulpit with thousands of people in a congregation taking out of their hard-earned money and sending that uh, offering and tithe to us, yeah, we would be just as prosperous as they were. We would be dressed in those five to 10,000 to hundred thousand dollar suits wearing these uh designer outfits and driving these you know two hundred fifty thousand dollar automobiles and living in these places you know yeah sure you can have two and three homes spread out around the world living in compounds the church itself is a compound and do they do good absolutely but they were prospering off of the monies of people and then lying to the people saying, you can get what I get. How can I get what you get? I don't have thousands of people paying me tithing and offering. So it's this prosperity message that just really infiltrated the body of Christ. Till today, you have people just really doing a lot of things that are borderline. They're not scriptural. And they think they are living an upright, saved life. A lot of people left the church because of the lies. And so they left the church and decided, well, I'm going to, you know, make my own platform. So they started self-ordaining, meaning all of a sudden they become prophetesses and prophets and apostles and all of this. And you start seeing all these titles and stuff coming on the YouTube platform prophesizing to everybody and telling them what this is and what that is. Who ordained you to do that? There should be order when it comes to the church. When someone is called to the ministry, there is an order to that. There is a level where there is mentorship, where there is iron that sharpens iron, where these you have to be held accountable for the word that you speak to the people. And a lot of these people have just self-ordained themselves. They went online, got some kind of degree. And because they're mad at whatever happened to them in the church, they have decided, okay, I'm going to make and build my own church online. And a lot of people follow these people. And they're the true false prophets because they're not truly chosen by God. And the way they'll get you is to say, hey, God told, chose me. God told me that I'm a prophet. God told me. And, and who, who is accountable to that? I am fine. How are you? I'll take a double double with cheese with everything. Onion as well? Uh, onion, yeah, okay. definitely. And then I'll take uh, french fries. Okay, no drink today? No drink today. Okay. Can you eat in the car or is it to go? Uh, to go. Oh, All right. Double, double onion fry going to be seven fifty five. Okay. That's Thank you so good. much. You too, my friend. They have ordained themselves. You know, there is an order to the ministry. Um, if you're a prophet or an apostle in the church, in the body of Christ, there is an order to that. And that order allows the, the ministers, the bishops, the elders, 
the you know the teachers the evangelists they are this order allows them to be held accountable for the word that they are presenting to the body of Christ I would never get on a platform and try to ordain myself that has to go through uh, men of God and women of God um, some people don't even believe women should be on the platform to um, you know be a bishop or pastor and I, I'm not even going to get into all of that but, but there are men and women who are seasoned in the faith that you have to be held accountable if you are going to uh, be ordained to minister and preach and pastor to folk. There is a level of responsibility that comes with that. And so we have a lot of people on this YouTube platform who have ordained themselves because they're bitter. They're bitter about something that happened to them in the church, the way they were treated in the church. And yeah, the church is filled with a lot of good and bad. And so they have, instead of seeing the good, they they see the bad and decide, you know what, I'm going away. I'm not going to church anymore. I'm going to get on this platform and I'm going to, you know, sp you know, spread my own truth. Everyone can articulate uh, an opinion. And because they are able to articulate an opinion, they feel like they are uh, rightfully ordained to minister and lead folk and a lot of people are listening to these people and they are buying into their bitterness and cold heartedness a lot of these people have a lot of negative things to say about uh, men of God who have fallen um, see these men of God didn't start off being fallen um, these men of God a lot of them I believe started off in uh, really uh, with good intentions and may have gotten caught up. That's always been my opinion. They may have gotten caught up with this prosperity message and all this other stuff that they have been, um, you know, it's, it, it, you know, to run a church and to pastor folk 10,000 plus, that's a huge responsibility. That's enough to make anyone go crazy. Um, you see a lot of these pastors dealing with things like mental health issues, depression, anxiety. Uh, we've heard of uh, pastors who have uh, chosen, um, you know, an addictive lifestyle and so having substance use disorders. Uh, some have uh, committed suicide or have felt like wanting to commit suicide because of the level of responsibility that they have. It's not a small thing. It's not a small level of responsibility. And so you have these folk who, you know, are getting on a platform, especially like the YouTube platform, talking about this man, This person is a, a false prophet and that person is a false prophet. That's that cat. I think I saw that cat on the Lost and Found. I'm going to go to our, we have, you know, the nextdoor.com. I think that's a nationwide thing. And I believe, you know, they, they put their pets if they lost their pets. And that looks like one of the well, no, that's not that cat. Because the cat that looked like that was the one that was sitting on a neighbor's porch. And she was feeding the cat and trying to identify it. So that's not that that one. So anyway, I'm sorry, I digress. Um, but back to what I was saying. Um, there are a lot of people listening to these people who are bitter and angry in their heart because they have been... Uh, damaged and uh, offended by folk in the church and so they decided to proclaim themselves as being prophets and apostles and all this kind of crap excuse my language but you know it, it's just disheartening because you have a lot of young people who are confused about Christ and Christianity uh, you have a lot of people who just really detest Christians because of the way uh, we have been misrepresented by folk who claim they are Christians. And so a lot of people who could be won over uh, to be followers of Christ and to be on this mission to win souls over have turned from the faith because of this misrepresentation. And uh, they have turned from the faith and just really ignore us as a body because they are disgusted by uh, how a lot of folk uh, have misrepresented the church. But 
Christians are human beings. They are not perfect. They are not Jesus Christ. They are not God. And so, you know, just because you have been offended by some things, I've been offended by things people did in the church. That didn't turn me away from the church. That didn't turn me away from the body of Christ that he created to be um, a, uh, you know, fellowship for us to come to and to sh sharpen each other. Um, that is not, you know, you don't do that. You don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, just because you have some bad apples in there, you don't throw away the whole body of Christ. And you certainly don't go and try to ordain yourself into being something that you're not, that you haven't been called to be. Um, and a lot of people are living delusionally, thinking that, uh, yeah, the Lord called me, I'm a prophet and I'm this and that, and I've been called to the nations to do this, that, and the other. And it's a whole bunch of mess going on in their hearts because the intent of the heart is not right. If you've been called, uh, you have to be mentored by those who are seasoned in the faith and who can really attest to what it is you are preaching and ministering and teaching to um, the body of Christ. And I believe um, those of us who know a little bit more about the word we like to come on the platform and just share the good news and that is what we're supposed to do as far as discipleship share the good news about uh, the Lord but certainly not come off as if we are or have been called to minister uh, in as far as you know being a leader of a body of people um, that takes uh, again order to do that and so um, I want you guys to pay attention to some of these people who come on these uh, social media platforms proclaiming to be, uh, you know, uh, led by God and to prophesize into your life and tell you you're going to do this, that, and the other. And a lot of their prophecies are pretty much general anyway. They're never specific. And if they were specific, they would be able to tell you about these last days. And that's where a lot of people get stumped. Because, like I said, we've been lied to, <laughs> hoodwinked, bamboozled about these last times. And because we have been lied to about the last times, a lot of people in the body of Christ don't really recognize what times these are and what's really going on with the systems of this world and why we are in the situation today. It's not a coincidence that we're living in a situation the way we're living and uh, a lot of people in Christ, in the body of Christ, a lot of people in the body of Christ are blind to that. And so I'm here to tell you, uh, get into the word, get the intent of your hearts in the right place. Walk in the spirit. I've been talking about walking in the spirit, meaning keeping those scriptures in your mind all day. Uh, keeping, you know, just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Keep that in your heart heart and in your mind all day and let the Lord lead and guide you and stop looking to some of these people on these platforms to tell you about things. pose on this one yeah even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge God gave them over to a debased mind to do th those things which are not fitting being filled with all unrighteousness sexual immorality wickedness covetousness maliciousness full of envy murder strife deceit evil mindedness there are whispers backbiters haters of God violent proud boasters inventors of evil things Disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but 
approve of those who practice them. See, house niggas don't mind. I mean, the Ku Klux Klan members don't mind you um, lifting them and saying this they God, because they're going to expect, disrespect the covenant of God. And they're going to train your ass to disrespect the covenant of God, too. And their white ass is safe. Forever praise you. Hold on this For you came and touched me With your healing rod That's all, put the Tupac tape in that. Y'all like mess me up. Put the Tupac tape in. Let it play for the last three minutes. So I do a little jig on you. I will raise up a prophet like you from among you, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he will tell the people everything I command him. God has used Reverend Peter Popov throughout his entire life and ministry to bring miraculous deliverance to hundreds of thousands of people around the world. Look at that man go! Woo! Man! Jesus made you dance like that. Yeah! Yes! Yeah! 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 How long? You had four brain tumors? I had four brain surgeries, and the proof is right here in the back of my head. I stayed in the hospital for eight months. When I came home, two weeks later, my husband was killed. His family wrote the military and told the military I was dead, took all my money. I just got a warrants letter for $390,000. $390,000? Everything you say in those letters is to the team from the Holy Ghost. You say, is that going to happen to me? Yes. Even more have had huge sums of miracle money transferred into their accounts supernaturally. I know God is real. I know what he can do. Every time I go to court, they throw it out. They deny it. So therefore, they haven't been able to take my homes. God is hurting people. A lot of people getting the wishes and dreams that they've had been hoping, dreaming, for a and long praying time. for a long time. Where's the pain now? We're back to hell. We've been alive. And Satan, I command you to back off. All my bills was paid and I got money to spare. I am now a real estate investor. I have started a jewelry business on eBay. Amen. I am on my way to my multi-million dollar potential. Hi. All right, so Not what really. is this residential center? Oh, this is a, um, a place that the ministry owns. Well, not own, we're, we're in the process of buying that. Yeah, we don't so own it yet. are you renting to buy or? Yeah, we're leasing to buy. You have that as an asset of 2,844,000. So do you own it? I just answered that. I said we didn't own it. Okay, we're but where, where does it. the, I'm sorry? We're leasing to buy it. Did, did you, I thought we just said that. All right, but yeah. you have listed it as an asset worth $2,844,000. Oh, 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 that should be more of a liability. All right, so where does the number 2844000 come from on your asset appra- liability? That's, I guess, the appraisal value of the home or the residential center. Is it a home? No, it's a residential center. We use it. All right. So you're saying it's not something you own, but you have it listed as an asset of $2.8 million. That's probably a mistake. Like I say, it probably should be a liability. Okay. And what goes on at the residential center? It is a, a, really it's a gathering place for our ministry where I bring in um, different uh, leaders and also the staff we have uh, as a place of uh, 
you know, maybe um, resort in teaching. And training. Resort? Yeah, teaching. A resort where we teach and train. On November 29th, 2013, JMMI paid over $6,000 to Louis Vuitton. Mm -hmm. Yes. What would that be for? Well, this is for clothes concerning my TV ministry as well. Oh, you have to wear Louis Vuitton? Oh, it don't matter what name it is. The point is clothing are allocated to us for ministry purposes as well. What do you mean they're allocated to you? You know, in a media ministry. In a what? Media ministry. Yeah. Okay, or on the road when I'm always traveling and using my clothes, I'm sweating through them. So I'm needing new clothes also for television ministry. So. And so um, you use ministry money to buy your wardrobe? Outfit. Your it's, outfit. Called, it's allocated more towards uh, ministry um, apparel. Does that go into what your income is? I'm sorry. Do you understand. show that in your income that you got Louis Vuitton clothing? No, that's not. That's That, that, that doesn't show. Because it don't go there. It don't go there. Mm -mm. I don't no. know what that means. It don't belong there. That's out of place. What's out of place? You don't get taxed on things like that. That's for that's for ministry business purpose. So it's not Louis Vuitton. Well, it's, you can call whatever you want. So June 2014, you spent $3,500 by JMMI to Versace in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. Yes? Uh, I'm sure that's right. If that's if and, it shows there. And those were that was for closing for you. Yes, probably. Yes, most likely. So you you don't see that there's any problem when you're ministering to the poor, the sick, the needy, to be appearing in Louis Vuitton and Versace. Well, that ain't something I purchase all the time. Um, no, it looks like you did several no, times. And uh, I mean, I I'm a very frugal person when it comes to this I go to the right places to get a lot of suits and if I get some from those places you don't see that you don't that see bill. I don't see Macy's no you don't see that you know because Macy's don't have the kind of suits that I wear but what I'm saying is this this Louis Vuitton things you don't see that in our charges all the time 2000 and <laughs> <laughs> said Joe Biden's president ha 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 let there be that we would strike the ground for you will give us victory God ha, 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 ha. and strike and strike and strike and strike ha, 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 ha. and strike until you have victory for every enemy that is aligned against you ha, 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 ha. strike and strike and strike and strike and strike ha, 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 ha. I hear a sound of abundance of rain I hear a sound of victory I ask oh God that you would take your iron rod and I ask that you would smash the clay jar of deceit in America. And Lord, if it be your will and if it be necessary, another election, another voting day, whatever it takes under your kingdom, oh God. Smash the delusion, Father, of Joe Biden as our president. He is not. The Lord says it is done. The Lord says it is done. Bring it all in line. Bring it all in line with the will of God. Why are you attacking the prophets, the, the, the intercessors, the Christians, the positive voices, no matter who they are, even on the media, that are wanting to see Donald Trump re-elected? Why are you attacking them? Could our faith be strong enough to pray for these two individuals that are at the helm of a, what appears to us to be a great pattern of deceit? You ought to be attacking the lying media. You ought to be attacking the liars that are wanting to strip our freedoms from this nation. Certainly an ideology that is anti-Christ, anti-biblical to its core. And if you think he's speaking in favor of the one that CNN celebrates, if you think he's speaking in alignment with the wicked of this world, if that's where you think God's voice is, then you don't know it. Let me tell you something. Every Christian 
every pastor out there that voted for Joe Biden last night, you have bought a curse upon yourself and your family, your children and your children's children down to the third and fourth generation, and you need to repent. We humble ourselves tonight, Lord God. We ask you in Jesus' name, Father, that you'd forgive us as a people. They're coming here. They're coming here in the name of Jesus from South America. Oh my God. Please. From Africa, from South America, angelic forces, angelic reinforcement. God, you are pro life. You be pro life for us. Jesus. We've played when we should have been praying. I believe there's somebody out there, they have a child who's been diagnosed with ADD, hyperactivity, and, and learning disabilities. And I believe if you anoint your child with, these, with this miracle spring water, God's going to touch that child. Amen. He's going to buckle down. He's going to study. He's going to get straight A's. Get better grades than he ever got before. Right. And you'll know it's because of God's supernatural right. touch. It's a girl, Liz. It's, it's, a girl. it's a girl, yes. Well, you just don't want to give her drugs because that doesn't do any good. You use have to use the Miracle, miracle Spring, spring water. water. That make a man offend to a war and lay a snare. You know, they try to trip a nigga up like me, you know, because I, I ain't following why these rules, you know. Are you laughing, Biatch? <laughs> you find it funny? <laughs> you find it funny? Huh? Wait, you, you ain't talk, you ain't hear me, huh? Get it again, okay, I'ma say it again. I come in the name of Jesus. Repeat it after me, bitch. I come in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. God Almighty, you know, rule of heaven and earth and every goddamn thing in between. You understand me now? Say what? You trust in the devil, huh? Well, if God send the devil in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit, then motherfucker, you fucked up, huh? You fucked up, huh? You know your ass is doomed. What you got to speak? If you don't know shit is speaking on this um, topic I'm bringing up, shut your goddamn ass up. <laughs> hell. You trust in hell, motherfucker, and you already in hell. Just like I trust in heaven and I'm already there, motherfucker. You the one going, you believe in death, huh? Goddamn murderer. Crucify my blessed brother. But when I find them, I'm going to get them motherfuckers. They be the one that's always laying law. Talking more than the fucking boy. Fuck that, I got that lot, lot back. Who created your ass? I come in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to say thank you to all of those on my staff and all my sons and daughters around the world. You all know that we are, we are warfare people. We, we're military people spiritually. And uh, this is the army that we're raising up, an army that is five-pronged. It's the army of Moses, the, the Mosaic army. That's when God himself came down and did a lot of the fighting, that kind of army. The second army is the Joshua army, combined with the Davidic army, the Gideon army, and the Lord Jesus army. Roshi katabadoko shakai. It don't make sense. Yeah, I'm talking about the one who Moses worked with. That's the one I was in his lap. That's why I tell all my enemies, you doomed. If you don't repent, you're doomed. You, you're not, you can't fight me and win. During Christmas, I like gifts and I like big gifts. Okay, go on, I will not mess this up. You know, he, we've given him a private jet. We've given him a Bentley convertible, and you know, the staff just would love to present you with this gift. Okay, what do you got for this time? A Bentley sedan. Give me a 
This is my Christmas present. This is your Christmas present. Oh Christmas my day. word. Y'all are so kind to me. Oh my goodness, what is that? I don't even know what make that one is. It's a 2017. It's one that actually you mentioned to Daniel and some of the others that you wanted. Wow. <laughs> Stop listening to that stuff and get in the word of God and let the Lord lead and guide you. All right, God, just thank you for stop. <laughs> thank you for stopping by at my channel. Uh, I will see you next time and God bless.